What's a job that was critical a hundred years ago but doesn't exist today? Log drivers. When cutting wood, they used to put the logs in the river to let them float downstream to the mill. There was so much that they would often get stuck, so people had to help them flow to their destinations. This was extremely dangerous. In Minnesota, they were called river rats, and many died during the job. John Jeremy was a famous corpse recovery man, and he pulled 104 river rats from the St. Croix during the lumber room. Gas lighter, lamp lighter. Street lights were gas, and someone would go around lighting them. I mean, there are still gas lighters, but the meaning is totally different. Delivering blocks of ice for people to put in their ice boxes. Fridges. You're going to have to start charging more than a dollar bag. We lost three men on the last expedition. If you can't think of a better way to get ice, I'd like to hear it. The stoke on trains and ships will literally shovel coal all day in intense heat. There's a tourist railroad in the White Mountains of New Hampshire that still employs stocks for their coal train. They may be the last ones in the US. Today we have garbage men, but at least in Victorian England, there were men in cities, London for sure, who would come by to collect ashes from your fireplace and or stove. Likewise, there were men who would collect your night soil from your cesspit. They had to shovel it out. In the 1980s, one of my friend's house in the outer suburbs of Melbourne was scheduled to be connected to the sewage because their house was at the end of a long street. The quote for the connection was astronomical and my mate's stepfather refused to pay it. But in order to force them, the council regulated against septic tanks. Well, stepdad went all the castle on the council and found an old regulation on the books that the council still had to provide a night soil man. So in the 1980s, this family was still going in a bucket and once a week, a very disgruntled council employee would have to come and collect it. Having to deliver water house by house, carrying it in a huge container on your back. In Spanish, it was called aguatero. Have this in Zimbabwe. Some areas of the capital city are lucky if they get municipal water twice a week. Some haven't had for close on 15 years. So those who don't have a borehole save 5,000 litre tanks and have to pay for a truck to deliver the water. Telegraph operator. Not only did they send the usual routine stuff we would now put in an email, but also sent emergency messages, death notices to military families in wartime and on ships were often the only means of communication to other ships or to shore. Telephone operators too couldn't just directly call someone, it was a person's job to connect your calls. Milkman. My house is pretty old and still has a slot with a dial to let the milkman know what we needed the following day. Where I live, we still have a milkman that delivers milk around the town. I didn't know it was that uncommon. Whoa. The job of the kid who stood on the corner yelling, extra, extra, read all about it. I haven't worried until now, but what is exactly it means by the word extra, extra? That you have more newspaper to sell than you normally would? That there's extra special news in the papers today? If anybody knows, please let me know. Extra edition. Normally there would be, say, a morning paper and an evening paper. When there was a large enough news event, an extra edition of the paper would be printed, ASAP, to cover it. Pin setters. Back before bowling alleys automatic back before bowling alleys automatically set the pins for you, they had people, usually young children, setting the pins by hand. I recall reading a law years ago that allowed children to work at a young age as a pin setter and a few other things than most jobs. My father worked as a pin setter and loves mentioning it any time he sees an automated bowling alley on TV. A typist. I remember my grandma saying that it was a real job security if you could type. I work at a print and mail shop about 15 years ago. Among other things, I processed mailing lists using software to format and create mailing label files used by specialized high-speed printers to the production floor. A lady in her 80s would come in every once in a while to perform data entry into an old DOS B DB2 edit database 2. Database. She had been an employee since the 50s when she used a typewriter to address envelopes. There was a team of ladies that would spend all day at their typewriters and they could address one or two thousand envelopes. Between me and two inject operators, we could do a hundred K on a long day. Computers. People would just do maths all the time, manually update spreadsheets, do iterative calculate by hand. 
NASA and large engineering companies just had departments full of people doing math. The Lensman science fiction series from the 1950s had a situation where the bad guy tried to seize control of the computers on the hero spaceship. Stripper in the print industry. If you ever go on a tour of a print house, feel free to use the out of work stripper joke. Lots of people sent countless nights stripping on tables back then. Scriveners. They were human Xerox machines. Handwritten copies of contracts needed to be done in triplicate for contracts. It was horrible, tedious work for people who were functionally literate and desperate for work. Scriveners were alcoholics and often paid in whiskey while they worked. Compared to all the other horrible, tedious work to be done in those days, maybe it wasn't so bad. It was an indoor job, a sitting down job, and a job that did not require one lift to lift heavy objects. Deal with molten metal or flying sparks or breathe toxic fumes. Perhaps some were drunken, old dropouts desperate for work, but it was more of an entry level office work position than a lifetime job. You'd start as a scrivener copying things out, but then work your way up within the office hierarchy to some other more cerebral job. According to Gilbert and Sullivan, if you copied all the letters with a big round hand and did it admirably, you could end up a lawyer, a politician, and even first lord of the admiralty. Pre-radar listener for enemy aircraft. Imagine talking badly about this guy and he hears it from across the base. Elevator operators. Don't see many these days. I see them every day. Most freight elevators in New York City have them. A lot of the freight elevators still even have the lever, but not buttons. Newspaper typesetter. There's a really cool documentary on the last NYT typeset issue. I think I saw it on our arc artisan videos. It's really amazing to see how many people it used to take and how many jobs were replaced by one person on a computer. I never lost my fascination for all things print related, especially these historical docs. It really saddens me that an entire craft is all about is all but extinct. Just us dinosaurs and our nostalgia for keeping it on life support. The milkman used to come every day to make sure your wife was feeling happy and taken care of before you got home. My dad was a milkman. I like that my birth certificate says milkman for father's occupation. Knocker upper. A guy who went around town hitting people's windows with a long stick to wake them up for work before alarm clocks came about. A hundred years ago we had planes man. Alarm clocks existed. Maybe more, a little more than a hundred years, but in the 18th, 19th century-ish England, there was a designated man at local pubs who would be in charge of swallowing the dice should the police walk in. I like to imagine that there were tables full of cards, ticket stubs, money and monkeys wielding knives, but because some guys swallowed some dice, the police were none the wiser. The guy who works in switching train lanes. I don't know what they call it. Although most switching is controlled remotely and electronically, some railways still use old school switch levers. The subway in Toronto still has an old section that is capable of being controlled by switch levers in the event of electricity or computer signal failure. Calculator. Literally a room full of people, usually women, who did arithmetic. They did one operation, then passed it on to the next calculator. I think they were also called computers. I saw it in a 1910 dictionary. Horse manure removal from cities. I saw a digitalized article from around the turn of the 20th century that warned that the number of horses that would be needed to keep up with growth in New York City in the future would exceed the capabilities of city services in clearing the towns of manure excrement daily. The streets would perpetually two feet deep in horse dump. Then automobiles, freight and delivery trucks saved New York from drowning in horse dump. Necker man would buy or collect old, broken, beyond workhorses and kill them or buy the corpses of the dead ones and sell them to the glue factory or dog for dog food. Think of one of the James Harriet books. The local one would take livestock too. Horses are mostly pets now in the UK. It wasn't just Mallock and Harriet's book that took livestock in addition to horses. Most necker men would take any livestock that wasn't for human consumption. The local blacksmith. They made or repaired almost anything. Wagons, check. Cutlery, check. Hardware latches, check. Hammer and tools, check. Plows and implements, check. Nowadays, blacksmiths make custom knives and decorative items and are no longer the hardware store for the whole town. 
Small metal working shops do similar things nowadays. If you need a custom metal part, you go there and get one made up in perspex. Newsies were a critical way to get the newspaper 100 years ago, but no longer really exist. To add to that, paper boys are not as critical as they were. It used to be a great way for kids to earn some spending money. Here in Spain, there used to be a job called Sereno, who were men who patrolled the neighborhood during the nighttime to watch out for robberies. They carried a huge stick, a whistle, and the keys to all the homes from the neighborhood. People who arrived home at night shouted Sereno for him to reply by hitting his stick hard against the pavement to let them know how far he was. Then he opened the door to their homes and continued his patrol. They also lit street lights, announced the time if someone shouted for it, warmed and called for help in case of a fire, etc. This job disappeared during the 60s or early 70s. When I lived in Pakistan in the late 70s, there was a guy who went around with a stick like that and his job was combined watchman and to make sure your house guard stayed awake. Someone murdered our guard. <laughs>